Cause he's got my eyes. He's my clone, baby. Now, go, go, papa. Go, papa, mama. I'm a clone, baby. Now. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator today. I would like to start up a series with uh, Rainbow Six Siege Operator Profiles. Today we're going to be looking at Alibi, the clone lady. Yeah, she thick and she got uh, thick times three. So let's have a look at her weapons first off. We've got the MX-4 Storm machine gun. This is a Beretta submachine gun. The damage on it is super low. Uh, not good at all, but the fire rate is right up there, and it actually does pretty decent uh, as far as managing recoil with enough add-ons on it, as you can see. I usually run the four-handle grip, the flash hider, as well as a holographic sight. Once in a while I'll run the laser sight, but that's mostly to bait people into thinking that one of my clones is actually me. Sometimes it can bite me in the ass, though. Obviously the enemies can see the laser sight. So for the MX-4, you're generally not going to want to aim for the body. You're always going to want to go for headshots because this thing is going to take at least four or five shots to the body to make somebody go down, which is actually quite a long time in Rainbow Six Siege, which happens in basically milliseconds. So you can get a bit of an advantage if you're not so great with the spray and pray because your clones will distract the enemy for just a moment before they realize that that's not what's moving and what's shooting at them. So MX-4 Storm, definitely not a super strong weapon, but it is my preferred weapon uh, as far as alibi goes. The other main weapon she has is the ACS-12 auto shotgun this thing is absolutely awesome has a 31 round or 31 shell i should say capacity and this thing will chew apart a wall in seconds flat it's absolutely amazing you can also run up get in people's face and before they know what hit them you don't even have to aim this thing just get close and let the lead fly it's absolutely an awesome weapon a little harder to use on the larger maps and stuff like that but the ACS-12 shotgun, definitely an interesting addition to the Rainbow Six Siege lineup because we haven't seen an automatic shotgun before. And uh, just like with the MX-4 Storm, the damage is quite low on this as well, but you will be shooting out a lot of pellets at the same time. So generally you can down somebody with this shotgun a little bit quicker. However, you uh, basically have to be right on top of your enemy, which is not something that I'd prefer to do putting myself in the line of fire. I prefer to play Alibi as a bit more of a distractor, a rogue, if you want to put it in those terms. So check this out. This wall gets absolutely destroyed even faster than my uh, my graphics card can process what's happening. <laughs> absolutely hilarious. And then the uh, next clip we've got somebody getting blopped right in the face. She throws a grenade in here and I find that as my chance. Just a couple of shots, down she goes. Really, really nice weapon. As far as sidearms, the Bailiff 410, probably my preferred sidearm. It is a, uh, a shotgun revolver, which is really, really interesting. Now, it's not going to chew apart walls as adept as the ACS-12, but it does a pretty nice job at making murder holes and stuff like that. The capacity is super, super low, only five rounds. All of Alibi's sidearms have a really, really low capacity. So if you're going to pull out that sidearm, you better not miss with it. That's all I'm saying. The Bailiff 410 has the ability to add a laser sight to it, which you probably never want to do because the whole point of a shotgun is to get that really nice spread to it. So even if you miss, you didn't really miss. Maybe you just hit him with a couple of pellets instead of the, uh, the full shebang -a bang But yeah. Really useful weapon as far as making murder holes. Usually I'll have this out during the setup phase and uh, knock a few holes in things instead of setting up my holographic clones because you don't want the enemy to know where your clones are going to be. Sometimes it's good to fake them out. Maybe you put a clone down, make them think that's where a clone is, and then you go stand in the place where the clone was during the droning phase. So you might be able to catch somebody by surprise that way. But usually uh, I'll put the clone up, make a murder hole adjacent to where the clone is standing and then when they mark themselves you don't really need a murder hole you could shoot through the wall but if you want that full impact damage then uh make a little murder hole and do what you do with your little assault rifle or i guess with the acf's 12 shotgun but if you're running two shotguns you're 
you're a crazy person. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just show you how it works real quick. I'm gonna make a little hole in this bathroom wall. Boop, boop. Glory hole. Right there. And it's not too bad. Obviously, you could uh, murk somebody pretty easily through this hole. And the nice thing about it is the, the slugs aren't going all the way to the window. So you're not going to compromise your defenses in that way. The other sidearm option for Alibi is the Keratos 357, which has freaking amazing damage to it. 78 damage. If you shoot anybody twice with this gun, they're going to be dead. Unfortunately, it only has a six round capacity, which definitely hurts it because I am not one of those skill cannon players. You can run a muzzle break on it, which is nice for keeping the recoil down. But again, only six shots. You're going to click through those way faster than you think. Especially since most guns, at least guns that I use in Rainbow Six Siege, have far more than six rounds in them. So you might be used to a gun like this if you're used to playing with the revolvers that the GIGN operators generally have. But usually I'll go with more capacity over less capacity. Unfortunately for Al Alibi, that's not an option for her sidearm. Tried to get some sweet kills with this, but it's mostly uh, me reloading while I get One shot in the face. <sighs> I need All some practice with that, but uh, luckily her main weapons are good enough that they more than make up for my lack of skill with her sidearms. So let's see a little bit of gameplay footage, and we can step into the clone zone. You're not you! Who are you if I'm not me? I'm you! I'm not me! Are you me or am I you? You're me! I'm who's he? I'm you too! Three friends hanging out, having fun. I I bug juice. 90 skits? You anywhere? You anywhere out there? Go get him, Valkyrie. I'll stay right here. Moral support. Whoops. <laughs> it didn't work as well as I'd hoped. Alright, so here's a, a full round with Alibi. Basically, the enemy team spanked us in the last one. I'm going to break one of the cardinal rules of Alibi and go ahead and set up some clones early, early in the match and see if that'll do me any favors. We do have a mute, so maybe they won't be able to uh, drone, drone out my clones as such. So that is a really nice thing. Go ahead and get some extra points for drones destroyed, and yeah, get my sweater. Always need that sweater, baby. Now I've got a couple of uh, clones left, so I'll go ahead and drop some more. One in this room in case they come through the door or the window. That seems nice to me. And yeah, having an enemy tag themselves is just really a gratifying feeling. I've been able to have an enemy tag themselves and they're still peeking, and then I'll shoot through the through the clone and mark them. And I think you get a penetration bonus for that as well, so that's really nice. There's a hole in the window, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a clone down there. See how that goes. And uh, keep your keep your fingers crossed. Keep your butthole clenched. Everything's gonna be awesome. So usually I like to watch this uh, stairwell. It seems like everybody else has the other entrance points covered. And yep, there's a lot of action going on there to the left. They took the bait. They took the bait! But we are getting murked. So sad when that happens. As you can see, I'm really anchoring hard. You can definitely roam with Alibi. She is fast enough to roam with relative ease. But the thing that I like to do is set up the clones and play off of them directly. You can also get uh, farther away from the clones and then once they tag themselves you can flank them a bit more easily. But playing on top of the clones I find it is a little more unexpected for the most part. It, nobody expects to see an alibi hiding directly under the legs of one of her clones. You can also throw down a clone and stand on the little platform if that's one of the things that they are looking for. Just hold your position, let them walk in front of you. Honestly, uh, most of the time it doesn't work. People will risk getting tagged uh, by the clone rather than risk getting shot in the back of the head. But 
it's an interesting strategy to try out every once in a while. So we've got me and Legion. I hope that we're going to be able to do this 2v4. My god. But it's not technically 2v4 because I got clones everywhere. So it's uh, it's 4v4 right now. Or 4v5, I guess. Yeah, all my clones are still up. So we got five people on my team. I ain't even worried, kid. Let's go ahead and try and merc this dude coming up the stairs. He's got a shield, so he's moving with impunity. Thinks he's somebody. From there, I tried to fake him out. I'm gonna shoot him through the couch. That's one way, good way to lure a shield user. Oh, he's not gonna, he's not gonna try and merc me. I'll shoot him. I'll shoot his legs. No, oh, dude, I got that penetration bonus. And there, I picked off Ash, I believe it was. And I'm the last one. We've got two people left, so... Here's another nice thing. Um, you can see when people move through your clone. So right there, I saw Glass coming only because the, the clone was standing still. And now we've got Montang, which my clones aren't really going to help me against him. So we'll just have to outplay. Outplay a little bit. There's my last impact grenade. I've got 32 health. So I could take a couple of bullets, maybe only one if he has the revolver. But yeah, he's just going to stand in the corner with the shield up. Good Montaigne players will chase you around and uh, put some pressure on you. Bad Montaigne players are just going to stand in the corner like this dude. So I think that I'm going to come out on top. It's just a matter of time. Come on, dude. This is like the worst thing ever. This is also a kind of a good tutorial on how to take care of shield users. You can see I kind of moved to the side, tried to uh, lure him with my reload. I will get him by moving to the side at some point, but you just have to play your little cat and mouse game. Uh, uh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, boy. <laughs> this is good fun. The second he drops his, his shield, I don't think he's gonna ADS on me. That would be a really bad idea. Maybe I should be aiming at his hands or his shoulders. <laughs> and he's shaking his head no. And I say yes. It's gonna happen, Bo. Get ready for it. You're getting too overconfident there. Alright. Let's see what we can make it do. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Found the opening. So yeah. Really, really sweet round with uh, Alibi. The thing I probably want to point out most is that Glaz coming through and disturbing the clone a little bit. And so I was able to uh, catch him off guard somewhat. That's really nice. Here's another example of playing directly on top of your Alibi clones. So you can see I'm basically just chilling out like I do with Alibi. And now we've got 15 seconds left, so dude's gonna charge in. I've seen his little legs through the drone hole. He's distracted by my clone, doesn't have enough time in that 15 seconds, and yeah, tags himself, but that doesn't really matter because aim for the head, boop, headshot. Very nicely done. That is why I like Alibi. Now, here's a clip of how some things could go wrong, possibly, <laughs> while you're playing Alibi. Um, you don't always want to move your clone. Especially if you're being pressured by the enemy in a big way. So I'm gonna break a window, drop a clone right there. That usually allows me to get some easy tags off. Especially if there's lots of windows on the map. If you break like three or four windows and put alibi clones in all of them and you're peeking out of one of them, then you basically make the enemy play a guessing game. Which they might guess right and then you get blopped in the face and nothing really happens. But usually they're not going to open fire on an alibi unless they know which one is real and which one is the clone. So that is definitely the strength of uh, the the Trixie young whatever operator. Another clone down there. And I know they're coming this way now because they tagged my clone. So, murked, murked, murked. There we got 3v3. That's good because they just took out uh, a couple of our dudes as well. So, Montaigne is there, but he's the distraction. You know, he's got somebody with him. 
So you're not going to want to pay too much attention to him. And my clone did not open because I put it too close to the counter. So that is not a good thing at all. Luckily I was able to uh, pick off Montaigne's little buddy there. And so we've got him in the hall all by himself and then somebody above that trap door who is now droning. So would now be a good time to grab the clone? Probably. Montaigne's not going to put his shield down. Um, and whoever is above the trap door is now droning. So that would have been the time to do it, honestly. But I did not. You can also lay down on the floor and pick up your, your drone, which is not the case for a lot of operators. I think that's a very good thing to note. So I don't know who has the diffuser. I assume it's not Montaigne or he'd be planting right now. But yeah, I do just want to keep an eye on him. I'm also tempted to go up and around to the trap door and try and see how that's going to go. But I just got droned, so yeah, abort that plan for surezies. And I'm not sure where Montaigne went. I'm going to grab this clone. Oh wait, no I'm not. Because I'm going to get lit up. Just like that. So you got to be super, super careful when you're picking up your clone, setting down your clone. It distracts you from the issues at hand. IQ got a really easy kill on me there that she shouldn't have been able to get. But overall, I think the strengths of Alibi far outweigh the weaknesses. I'm gonna get at least one clip in here of Alibi rolling with the shotgun. This is uh, after that IQ that threw the frag got fragged. But I think the lesson in this clip is that you should not be afraid to move your clones. So. I'll drop my clone right there, suspecting that somebody's going to come through this way. Obviously that's why I would stand right next to the door with the shotgun, because that's really the only range that it's good at. We're 2v2 now, got Rook over there doing some stuff, lurking, shallow roaming as they call it. And yeah, 2v1, we got this. We got this in the bag, I do think, but I want to go ahead and make sure that victory is secured. And I hear Twitch over this way, so I'm going to pick up my my little droney. Or not my drone. <laughs> my my clone. My clone drone. And drop it behind the, uh, the machine there. The vending machine. And just wait. Just hang out and wait for a little bit. And again, Alibi is really most effective when the round is nearing the end. People are under a lot of pressure to get into the room. They don't want to get shot in the face at the last moment. So they are liable to shoot absolutely anything. And that is exactly what is going to happen. Twitch is going to run into the room, see the, the clone, and blast it. And that will allow me to get a bead on her position. There you go. Nice and tagged. Blah, blah. Easy day. Really so sweet. I, I just love Alibi. It's so nice. So for most of this match, I've been standing on the couch between my clones, just hoping that somebody would uh, walk up these stairs. It's not happened. You can see we've got 30 seconds left on the clock. A lot of what I do with Alibi is just uh, either hiding between the clones' legs or standing between them and trying to lure some shots onto either myself or others. I can see that Legion's down there. Making some trouble. I'm gonna go cover this other doorway right quick because 15 seconds left and Montaigne's gonna walk through the door. Hey, buddy. We had some of this uh, a little bit earlier, too. And there goes Captain Montaigne. You can see that the MX4 isn't so bad after all. It's definitely usable, especially with the use of some impact grenades with it. Definitely one of my favorite operators. I'll probably do a different video later, uh, a bit more about how to deep roam with Alibi because most of what I've been doing here has been shallow roaming and basically sitting on top of my clone's butt, you know, but I find that to be a very effective tactic. So you should just find what works for you and uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this new operator. I definitely think it's super interesting. I've fallen for that clone more times than I care to recount, and it definitely does flip the game. Not as hard as something like Lion or Finca, granted, but definitely a nice operator to add to the lineup. Anyways, friends, 
This has been Rainbow Six Siege Alibi's Operator Profile. We'll be back with another Operator Profile sooner or later. I can't say that this is going to be like a fast-moving series or anything like that, but I do want to uh, let let my opinions on a lot of these Operators be known. Probably Blackbeard is going to be up next. Uh, but let me know who you would like to see in the comments below. We've also got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. If you'd like to support me on any of those, that would be massively appreciated. I'd like to thank MMX Akira and Nico the Legend for being our current Patreon supporters. Anyways, friends, thanks once again for watching. This has been Rainbow Six Siege. I've been Brett Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye bye One... Two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.